Welcome to worship at Carroll's Creek Baptist Church. I'm I am grateful for your faith. You chose him today to be in your heart, your mind, your spirit, the Lord's day. They set aside for him to come, praise, and worship his holy name. And the joy of that is that he is here. He is ready to meet with us, speak to us, God and grace to receive our worship. So my prayer is that everything in this worship hour will be for His honor, for His glory. And as we lift up the name of Jesus, we will receive from His Spirit that which He already knows we have need of. This is the day of the Lord of heaven. We will rejoice and be glad. Let's pray together. Lord God, we praise you for this day and the privileges that we have as your children to come together to lift the holy name of Jesus in worship and in praise. I ask, Lord God, that we open our hearts to let praise flow, but also your spirit to enter. Thank you, God, for being with us. That what are the thoughts? We're two or more together. You are there in the midst of them. Receive our worship. And we thank you for that which you will give to us. Bitter to those who have special needs. Bless those who need comfort. According to your will, bring healing to those that are sick. And we will give you the praise in all things because all things work together for the good for those who love God, those who are called according to your purposes. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us first and best through Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. This morning.
sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the light that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is true, forever God is with us, forever. Forever, from the rising sun to the setting sun, His love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will we will carry on. Praise, sing praise, sing praise. God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Philippians 3.8 I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his name.
please. Turn to Luke chapter 9. Aren't we glad that we are not alone in this pilgrimage of life? And aren't we glad that being in His presence, being His child, is more valuable, of much greater worth than all that this old world can give? He is indeed glorious in all things and in all ways. Let me invite you please to stand with me as we honor God in the reading of His Word. Luke chapter 9, beginning with verse 23. Then He said to them all, If anyone desires to come after Me, let him deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow Me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Pray with me, please. Dear God, this is your word. May it speak to our hearts your truth. Help us to be obedient to that which you call us so that we can be those lights for Christ in this world we have called to be, so that we might be the salt of the earth that we are called to be, that we might be ambassadors for the Lord Jesus, as you call us to be. Teach us, I ask in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. In preparing for this message, praying over it, looking at materials, listening, there were some scriptures that came to my mind, and those were prompted by a video that was sent to me, Shane and Shane, a video entitled, Though He Slay Me, and the accompanying mini-message by John Piper. And I want to share that today with you because of the value and the way it begins to help us to think about this passage of denying ourselves, taking up our cross daily, and following Jesus. Tear 
was worth it all Not only is all your affliction momentary, not only is all your affliction light in comparison to eternity and the glory there, but all of it is totally meaningful. Every millisecond of your pain from the fallen nature or fallen man, every millisecond of your misery in the path of obedience is producing a peculiar glory you will get because of that. I don't care if it was cancer or criticism. I don't care if it was slander or sickness. It wasn't meaningless. It's doing something. It's not meaningless. Of course you can't see what it's doing. Don't look to what is seen. When your mom dies, when your kid dies, when you got cancer at 40, when a car careens into the sidewalk and takes her out, don't, don't say, it's meaningless. It's not. It's working for you an eternal weight of glory. Therefore, therefore, do not lose heart, but take these truths and day by day, Focus on them. Preach them to yourself every morning. Get alone with God and preach His Word into your mind until your heart sings with confidence that you are new and cared for. Every one of us can be touched and relate to that song because we've all suffered in this life. We've all had loss. We've all had trials and difficulties. Jesus promised those. They should not surprise us. But what may surprise us is that He has claimed them for himself. Remember what the psalmist says, that he has bottled up every tear? Those mean something to God. Your pain 
your sorrow, your suffering is important to God. And Paul, the apostle, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, says this, which kind of brings it to a conclusion in his thought. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In building our spiritual house over the last few weeks, We've dealt with three of the corner posts today, the fourth. The first three being worship and prayer and the Word itself. Today, without a doubt, is the most difficult. Whereas we can worship and we can pray and we can read the Word with not a significant amount of effort, unless we're really involved in in aiming toward worshiping in spirit and in truth, that takes more preparation. Unless we're really desiring our prayer be more than just giving God a list, and it's truly a desire in our hearts to know God in our prayers and submit our will and our needs to God for His will and way. Or in the Word itself, it's more than just reading for information. It's reading for comprehension of who God is. Now, those make worship and prayer and the Word more significant. But today's topic indeed is more difficult, more demanding than even those because it is self-sacrificing service. You may be asking, what does all this have to do with building a house? Much. For us to be what God desires for us to be, for you and for me to be truly committed followers of Jesus Christ, useful instruments for His plan to be light in the world, to be salt of the earth, to be ambassadors for Christ. For us to be that means a commitment, an intuitive thought that this is what I want to be and do. And the only way to get there, the only way to get there is to be able to see things, see life, see the good and the bad as God sees them. And then in understanding more about how God sees every aspect of our lives, to apply the truth that His Word brings to us. And and therein we find what it is to have purpose and peace and joy in life. And anticipation of what God has for us in the future. Though He slay me, Yet I will trust Him. Yet I will praise Him. Because all things work together for good for those who love God and those called according to His purpose. If you listen to what Piper said in that brief mini-message of about two minutes, one of the lines there talks about each aspect of our lives, good and that which we would call bad, evil, Suffering, all of that has significance and meaning when we are walking with the Lord. When our lives are there, we live in a chaotic and meaningless time in a lot of venues in our nation, in our world. But God's word is this, you matter. And what happens to you matters to me. God has a word for us. All this comes to a conclusion because self-sacrificing service 
is demanding. And the conclusion is this. I will either choose to be that type of servant for God or not. It's that simple. Now, what the results of that will be is significant. As Paul says, these light and momentary afflictions, and we go back and look at his life, and we know all that he went through was incredibly significant in suffering and in persecution. But if we go back and look at his life and hear him say, light, momentary afflictions, we can look at our lives and, and understand that what we are going through is significantly less than what he went through at this juncture of our lives. And the reason he could say that, even though his suffering was great for the Lord, is because he understood what was beyond what God's promise was for his obedient children. And that promise is this, a weight of glory that is exceedingly wonderful and forever. That's God's promise to you and to me also. Self-sacrificing service, discipleship, is demanding. But the reward is incredible and awesome. As we focus on this Luke passage, in all three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, deal with this particular episode in the life of Christ where he talks about taking up one's cross and denying self daily and following him. Other things were part of this event. First of all, we see that Jesus had just finished teaching, feeding 5,000 men plus their families that were there. Remember how he took the little two fish and five little barley loaves and fed the 5,000? They took up 12 basketfuls of the remains and leftovers? That had happened. Also, something that happened is this. Jesus had asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some say Elias, and some say the prophet, and some say this and that. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Remember what Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that sounded great and grand until Jesus, in this same segment of events, began to say to Peter and to the other disciples, the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem, be handed over to evil men, and be crucified. And Peter rebuked him, said, Not so, Lord. And what did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. You, you're thinking the way of men, not of God. And then we have this statement. And it said to all, all that were still there, all the disciples, of course, but all those who had heard the, the great sermon and then had been fed, they heard they, anyone, anyone here that wants to follow after me must deny self, take up the cross and follow me. And every one of those knew exactly what that meant. So the first aspect of this, three definitive pictures that Jesus draws for us. The first is denying self. That denial is a strong word used three other times in the New Testament. One of when Peter denied Jesus that he never knew him. The night that Jesus had been betrayed by Judas and was facing the cross the next day. Another in Luke 12 and Titus 1 and John, uh, 1 John 2, deal with what the Bible calls reprobates who permanently have denied Christ. They, they are said to, to be denying in such a vehement way that they cannot be redeemed. Remember Jesus said there's one, one unpardonable sin, and that is 
resisting the Holy Spirit. And if you say no to the Holy Spirit when He's calling you to Christ, then God will not always strive with the spirit of man, but will one day just cut, cut off that call. We should never give up because we don't know when that call could be cut off for one we love. But the reality is we must maintain a prayer vigil for anybody we know who needs Jesus because there's going to come a time when that call will no longer be given. A third time was when John the Baptist insisted, denied that he was the Messiah as he was the forerunner of Christ when he came. Denying self has several aspects. Denying any spiritual worth in ourselves. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul again talks about this denying of, of any personal worth, spiritually speaking, in our lives. Verses 4 through 6 here in the third chapter. He said, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is by the law, blameless. Everything that Paul had done, every accomplishment that he had made, he would recognize in the next verse says, I count them all but rubbish for the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. There's nothing spiritually good in ourselves unless the Spirit of God has control of us. You see, part of denying ourselves is to die to self. And we cannot live for Christ until we deny ourselves and literally die to That was the battle that Paul had, remember? He would say that for me, uh, uh, it's a struggle. The flesh, I have to beat the flesh into submission daily that God may be glorified in my life. And we'll look at that a little more in depth here when we take up your cross. But it's denying spiritual worth. It's denying spiritual ability. You know, spiritually, we have no ability outside of our relationship with Christ, Paul would say in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He didn't say I can do all things because I'm, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I'm a Jew of the Jews. I'm, I'm of the lineage of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the tribe of Benjamin. He didn't say that. He said I can do all things through Christ. Remember Paul also said that he was in and of himself chief of all sinners. So nothing spiritually good was there. No spiritual ability in himself. And also to deny any personal right. Did you know that as a Christian we give up rights? Our world is clamoring for rights. I have a right to this. I have a right to that. I have a right to someone else's property. I have a right to achieve. I have a right to feel good. I have all these rights. No, a Christian does not. The only right that a Christian has is the right to be submitted to God and God's will. But listen, that's the place of protection and purpose and peace. The world can't give it to you. Only God can. And listen, that old song is so true. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Absolutely. Because it is from God. But we must understand that we have nothing of spiritual worth in ourselves. We have nothing of spiritual ability in ourselves. Denying that those things are there. And denying any personal right. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20, We are no longer our own. We have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Denying self means more than just 
you know, I'm going to maybe give up something. It's taking up something. It's taking up an identity that's not our own. Spiritually, the identity of Christ. Spiritually, the ability of the Holy Spirit within us. Spiritually, to have the, the joy of being in right relationship with Christ. That I belong to Him. There's the joy and the peace. Deny self. Secondly, is to take up the cross daily. Now, it's obvious when Jesus said, take up the cross daily, He wasn't talking about a one-time death. But that illustration he gave, that picture he gives of the cross has great significance. Everybody in his audience that heard him knew exactly what was meant by that cross illustration. It was an instrument of execution and death. But Jesus said you need to deny self and die to self daily. Give of your life daily. They also knew what that daily would mean because it was routine. Whereas we have some control, if you will, over our routines. Yes, we work in those things, but still, we have a great deal of control. They didn't. Theirs was a sustenance life. They were farmers, they were agrarian, they were herdsmen, and they had to work every day to have food on the tables. They didn't have a pantry they could go to. They didn't have a neighborhood market or a Publix. They were working. They knew what routine was. Every day was much the same for those in Jesus' audience. But even then, we can apply this truth to our lives that if we are willing to die to self and to live for Christ, then our days will be sacrificing joyfully so that He can use us bountifully in His purposes. And then finally is follow me. Jesus said, follow me. Deny self, take up your cross daily, and follow me. And what exactly is that saying to us? I love the old hymn, wherever He leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Take up thy cross and follow me. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Jesus in John chapter 10 speaks about following and who we should follow and why we should know who we should follow. Obviously, this side of the cross, we understand it's Jesus. But to his readers, I mean to his listeners, uh, I, we're the readers to his listeners. It was something different. He would say this in chapter 10. I say to you that the shepherd does not enter the sheepfold except by the door. But that one who is the enemy climbs up another way. That one is a robber and a thief. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads him out. Several things right there. God knows your name. That's a wonderful and a terrifying truth. Because God knows each of us better than we know ourselves. But he also calls us, and when God calls, when the shepherd calls us, we know it's his voice. There are a lot of voices in this world today trying to confuse us in spirit, confuse us in morality, confuse us in ethics, all kinds of competing uh, voices shouting for our attention. But when we are walking with him, in him, seeking him, we'll hear his voice and we'll know it's the good shepherd. Jesus goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And then my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone 
pluck them out of my hands and the Father who gave them to me is greater than all and no one can pluck them out of my Father's hands. Jesus gives us assurance here of the shepherd. And do you see the picture there about the shepherd, the voice, and the door? Beautiful illustration that God is the one who opens heaven's door to those who follow after the good shepherd, those who hear his voice. And God allows those to come in with Jesus, the good shepherd. So all this leads to a a, a big question. Why? Why should I deny myself? Why should I take up my cross, which is self-denial and death to self and living to Christ? Why should I follow after Jesus? Well, there's a big if. In, again, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said to them all, if. There's a decision to be made. We, we decide whether we're going to follow or not. We decide whether we're going to be instruments in God's hands or not. We decide. And God will either use us or listen. His disobedient ones, He will chase it. A father chastens the child he loves. God chastens the child of his that he loves. Leading us, trying to gain our attention so that we will follow the pathway that Jesus walked. We will be instruments in his hands. We will be worthy of the world. We will be light and salt ambassadors for Christ in this world. If I would be that disciple. The reason that I believe that each of us want to be that type of disciple, want to be that self-sacrificing servant is first and foremost because it brings honor to God. And I believe that everyone here, those listening by live streaming, I believe that we want to honor God. It takes denying self. It takes dying to self. It takes taking up a cross daily to follow him. It takes a giving heart that will say, not your will, not my will, but your will, God, be done. Not my will, your will be done. So how do I bring this type of self-sacrifice into my life? Well, we choose. We choose whether we're going to live for Christ or not. Look what he says, and it's all about denying. If anyone desire, desires, if, desires to follow me, let him deny himself, take his cross, follow me. It is all self-sacrificing. So how do I make that? Well, for some of you, it's just a continuation. You're living a self-sacrificing servant lifestyle. You're allowing God to work in you and then through you for the spiritual well-being of others. So just continue that. And and by the way, you know where you stand with God. You know what your needs are in this particular area of discipleship. And if you're like most, your need is probably this, to renew a zealous commitment to do the things Jesus has told us to do. And then why do we do all that? Because there is an eternal inheritance awaiting. If whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, in the other gospel, Matthew says, for my sake and the gospel's sake, we'll find it to eternal life. Why deny? Why take up cross? Why follow Jesus? It honors God, and then it blesses us. It's an indication that we belong to Him. It's an indication we have surrendered to Him. It's an indication that we are building our spiritual house by His design. Remember, this is the fourth corner post. So to continue that process, it begins again with that renewed zeal to be wrapped in the wonder of worship. You're here. But 
wonder and worship is something that should be every day. We should be able to worship by the glory of creation. We should be able to worship by the miracle of birth of a child. We should be able to worship God by His architecture of this incredible universe, this, even this world in which we live. Worship. The wonderful worship of God. Wrapped in that. And then also the second is be persistent in the privilege of prayer. Prayer cannot be just a, a cry for help in times of need because prayer is so much more, so much deeper. Prayer is a heart that longs for the presence of God. It's a heart that desires for God to speak to that heart. It's a heart that desires to know God's plan, know God's purpose, know God's person, and then follow after God. Be persistent in the privilege of prayer. Be washed in the wisdom of the Word. It's, it's more than just reading. It's gaining insight into who God is, what His plan is, what His desire for my life is. So wrapped up in the wonder of worship, persistent in the privilege of prayer, these things will continue in the process of being submitted to God, denying self and taking up one's cross. And then having the, the Word of God to wash us, teach us, draw us closer to God. And then finally, to be secure in the self-sacrificing life of a servant. Yes, I use the word secure because there's no place in this universe more secure than being where God wants us to be. And that's why we must follow. It's a command that Jesus gave to us. If you will be my disciples, take up your cross and follow me. Why? Let me just conclude with this. Why? Take up a cross? Why deny self? Why follow Jesus? Because God is preparing a great, exceeding great weight of glory for us in eternity. And listen, that, that glory is not the golden streets or the pearly gates, or the angelic choirs. That glory that He is preparing is when we step into the very presence of God. God's presence is the glory that awaits His children. I long for that. My prayer, my hope for each of us is that we will be that type of child of God that's obedient, following after Jesus, and that we will consider things the way God considers things. Every moment of our lives, important to God, they should be important to us. Every event of life, an allowance into our lives by God, so that we can be prepared for an eternity of exceedingly great glory in His presence. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, thank You for the privilege of hearing Your Word today. Thank You, Lord God, that this is Your Word, that this Word is trustworthy, this Word is filled with Your joy, Your peace, Your glory and promises for your children, and yes, commandments for your children, and your commandments are not grievous. Jesus said, my burden is light. And Paul recognized that these afflictions of this world are light, momentary, and one day will pass away as we come into that exceedingly great weight of glory, which is the presence of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for your word. May that inspire us to seek you every day 
in worship every day, in prayer every day, in the Word every day, and in somehow, some way, sacrificing of ourself that Jesus may be magnified in ourselves. So, Father, thank you for that incredible privilege of being your children through faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. And thank you for allowing us to be your children in this world, your light, your salt, your ambassadors, because Jesus is our Lord. Thank you for loving us, first and best, through Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Would you stand, please? Take up thy cross.